So good morning again, everyone. This is Mihai from pipcenter.com. Guys, we're looking at uh, pound dollar and pound yen. From uh, first, we're going to look um, at the larger charts, um, starting with a clean chart, um, drawing an analysis of um, the main moves, uh, support resistance levels, uh, trend lines, and waves. Then we're going to look at the rainbow chart, and uh, well, hopefully we'll um, be able to to identify some uh, setups for uh, short term and for uh, mid term as well. Uh, let's start with pound dollar. All right. Now, if you remember, guys, from last week, uh, just read this size of this window. Um, we were talking about a certain trend on the daily and weekly, which was still active, and it was defined by this trend line break and the break above this level of resistance. And some of you who were here last week uh, remember um, I was looking at midterm longs on um, on pound dollar based on this scenario as long as price maintained itself above 159. Now there was something that I was uh, watching for um, a certain one two three four five setup right here, okay, which was not complete at the time. Um, I think price was around uh, 160.20. I was long and I did um, exit those longs uh, for loss um, late last week. Managed to balance some of them, but in general, um, I uh, I could not manage to compensate for uh, the longs around 160. So uh, they had to to be closed for approximately 180 pips. Um, managed to get about 100 all in all in um, longs on Friday, but that was really not uh, enough. In any case, now let's see what we have now and what is the, the new confirmation, what is actually the new setup that's confirmed with this long uh, weekly candle. Now, first of all, there is this level here which normally, if the longs were still active, shouldn't break. Now, it didn't quite break. Uh, the fact that we, we spiked above, uh, sorry, we spiked below about uh, 50 pips, so clearly uh, this low was such, okay, uh, that already tells me that this trend line, which defined the bullish wave, which was intact last week, now is broken, okay? And there's something that right now, looking at the chart from this perspective, becomes interesting and becomes um, sort of uh, defining the new setup. The fact that we had this move down followed by a move which looks like a retracement very much, but at the time when the trend line breaks, it's only then when we actually start looking for the the continuation. Okay, I wouldn't have looked for um, shorts on GU unless price um, broke the 159, 20, 159, 30 area, which is the trend line that was um, actually the, the breakout uh, trend line, okay? There was also another level here. I think it's, this is a daily level. Clearly, it was broken as well. So we have horizontal levels breaking. We have trend line, okay? The main the most important trend line for me right now is this supporting trend line. The price was staying above it with a breakout of the uh, descending trend line just confirming us into the longs. Right now we have the opposite situation. Okay, we have price breaking the support trend line. Okay, and we're looking at a new, this would be the new trend line. Okay, it looks like in the end, we still have some level of, of resistance on this trend line. We didn't have enough price to, to break, I mean, I mean, enough price action to break the previous high and give us the long-term uh, move that was sort of um, expected. Now, let's see what we have from a larger perspective. You can see how price is right in between the support trend line, ascending trend line, and, and the descending one right towards the middle. We're actually leaning towards the short side now with the MACD uh, crossing down, but we're still not in a very clear territory on this weekly chart. 
okay you can see how uh, price action is going more and more towards the average of the last moves see this this was the last uh, serious move up followed by a move down that was approximately 78 percent but definitely making a higher low and right here we have a lower high and right here we have another higher low another lower high okay and we had another lower high yesterday uh, sorry last week uh, no, sorry, this was last month, but it's within the same dynamic of um, price action um, narrowing down to a small channel, a narrow channel. I'm expecting this to break very soon. Um, basically, I was looking for long for as long that, uh, as this trend line was uh, giving support. Otherwise, we'll have to, again, look for more downside. Now, how could this happen? Let's see. And what do we have on the daily chart? How convincing is this move, first of all? The trend line break, oh, just one moment. Guys. Okay. This would be the trend line break right here. Okay. Is this a clear trend line break? Definitely and it also broke the previous level of support this is a weekly level as well as a daily level okay and it actually closed on the daily um below the support at 158 um, 20 i think we are now trading above this 158 level now that we have a bearish confirmation in short term that's pretty clear and look at the size and the strength of this wave um, this leads me to think that we are not going to retrace this wave entirely. Okay, this would be the reference move right now. And this would be the reaction expected. Especially if we see that there is a pause in the momentum of this drop. Now we saw that the, tr the support uh, line was taken out yes but price did not manage to close um, below it more than one we just immediately pushed up above 158 and we've been uh, trading above 158 now yes what we have is a bearish setup definitely okay but I do not see these bearish uh, moves happening immediately okay um, we will see what the four hour is suggesting, but I'm actually, in, I tend to give priority to some longs at this point up to actually even 1.60. Now, the first argument is how this weekly chart looks. Okay. We are still inside an, an area, a very large area of consolidation on the GU. We are not into a very strongly trending market as far as the long-term charts are concerned, weekly and monthly. Okay, even the daily chart, well, it looks bearish, yes, at this point, but we're not beyond certain key levels. Okay, that doesn't give too much confidence for long-term and short-term uh, converging here for a drop right now today at 158 okay we're going to have to analyze this wave a bit uh, more closely but this is what i'm thinking about actually either a bounce of the support point now the support point was broken yes on on the daily chart but we did not close the weekly there as you can see so the support on the weekly this uh, pink line is very much intact 158.16 that should tell us something and besides not even the daily managed to stay below this 158 for more than just one one night basically okay as far as i'm concerned we should have more reaction here once this move is underway and it looks to me like it is already underway we closed uh, the last um, daily candle around this 583 we're now around 58 uh, market doesn't say much at this point it's very very flat all my uh my charts, my live data system is uh, flat on all pairs except for dollar Canadian. All of them are short. Oh, and dollar yen, yes, slightly uh, bearish. 
but all, all the others are flat, which means um, we didn't really have much confirmation today for anything. Okay, um, GU is now um, flat also, at um, close to giving a short signal, but not really uh, there yet. Okay, now let's see the four hour chart. This is where it could get interesting if we see that we have five waves complete and we have reasons to believe that it will um, move higher up. Let's see. Now the first the first wave is quite difficult to identify according to with well going on my um, normal uh, usual uh, rules. I would look for a trend line break. It's here where it happens. So this would be the wave two. It doesn't really fit the usual uh, pattern. Okay, and this would be the wave three starting here all the way. We could be into a wave four right now. If this is indeed true, then I would look for wave four to be clearly um, more than just this small segment. So basically, I would look for the market to go something like this. One moment, let's see where the trend line break. Here's the trend line break. I'm going to draw the black waves right now. Trend line break and price action above it, some support on the trend line after it breaks, giving me the confirmation for this being wave one. This would be my wave two. Now, this would be a three, even though it doesn't really, it doesn't seem like complete uh, either, okay? Because this in itself is a wave, all right? But one point, uh, I'm really not that much interested to go and identify each and every move, but I'm interested in a wave four that's more than just a 38.2, less than 50% what we have here. Okay, I think this is less than 50% of the wave one. You would expect a bit, uh, bigger, a larger move. And right now, uh, compared to three, we're really low, right at the 25%. So yes, in theory, it could drop right here and have another uh, move down with a fresh low that would be still within the boundary of this move. But in fact, with some support established around uh, 57.30, let's mark this level as the four hour support point. It's actually still around the 158, it's 57.65. I would look for more than just 25%, maybe up to 159, 159.20, before seeing price hitting another low, okay? Now this will be the first scenario, and then after this we we, we would have, uh, of course expect a bit more upside to um, confirm the red wave. But bottom line is, at some point I will expect something like 159, 90, 160 even to be hit one more time before seeing what could possibly be a, a big drop. Okay. It's just the retracement after the move from last week. All right. Now, if it's already started or it still has to make another low, that remains to be seen. But at this point, I think that risk reward wise, it's actually um, safer to go long on this retracement, um, targeting around 159.90. Okay. And keeping the perspective, of course, of this move um, to short term. I wouldn't push more than that, especially if I see some uh, some resistance uh, building up there. And keep also an eye on the trend line of the wave. Okay. The trend line of the wave is somewhere around, uh, yeah, around the 160. Okay. So either we're going up right from around here and we go straight towards 160 as part of this first move or not, but either way it's the same conclusion, or we're headed lower towards another attempt somewhere around 57.50, in which case we wouldn't drop that much, it's only about 60 pips. So the risk reward, even if you are buying now and even if you have to, to go down one more time, uh, the target would be around 100, so it's still risk reward wise, it's still possible and um, okay to 
to attempt a long for a retrace. Now let's see what the indicators are suggesting. Actually, the um, MACD is suggesting long. Rate of change is saying no at this point because it shouldn't look like this. It should um, it should be at the beginning of of a wave. You see? So this is where actually it it confirmed the crossover exactly on the candle that gave the first bullish candle. All right. This is where it crossed. And right now it's crossing down, so the, the rate of change is not giving us uh, the green light for long at this time. Strix is bullish still, but it might uh, need another confirmation from the rate of change. Now, I'm not really um, counting on indicators to give me the, the actual trade, uh, but what we see for now is indicators wanting to go up, want, trying to point up, but not really being confirmed all the way all right i would actually look for a really bearish rate of change that turns bullish while the tricks and the macd remain biased up okay this is more of a larger direction this is more what hap what's happening right now are we getting a signal right now I think this is going to get more difficult as we move towards the smaller charts. As you can see, the price action is very, very tight at this point. We're in a really, really tight um, area here. Now, it's where I do not want to make any any other assumption. Everything uh, will be on the larger charts where I can read something. For me, these charts are just um, too much of a gamble. I'm right in between 5, 7, 8, 8, and 58 to 35, exactly in between around a weekly level of support on a bearish trend, but with high probability of correction. So I have uh, arguments uh, for the bearish side. Clearly, the, the main trend, the fact that we have strong resistance at 35 on one hand. On the other hand, we have the slowing down of the price action around this point, the good support level on the weekly, which is, comes in right where price is right now, and the area of support starting with 58, uh, 57.80 to 57.60. So short term, actually one hour and below, this for me is just um, a chart that's flat, and that's just it. Um, I'm really not going to go any deeper into it, I don't see the point because any signal or, or any uh, setup that we would have could be overthrown in just uh, 10 or 20 pips. Okay, right now, if it drops 20 pips, the bias will shift um, to the short side quite strongly. But if it breaks 35, it will probably indicate another uh, move towards uh, 159.10. So this is what I'm suggesting for now. This would be... I think a pretty good buy area, okay, at the break of 35, this area has been tested five times now, including today. So if you see in New York session, either as a result of uh, fundamentals or simply price going there slowly, um, I think 158.40 to 158.90, 159.10, this would be clearly a bullish territory with possibility of, of um, extending the move. Of course, it depends on the momentum. But below 157.88, we should see most likely an attempt to go towards a fresh low, 57.30, 57.20 even. Now, this would be the area for shorts. It really looks to me like 50-50 uh, right here. I'm really not going to try to make any assumption. Uh, price is also right in between these two scenarios. But based on the larger chart, I think if you approach this situation more um, as a swing trader, you will find that um, a long would have a better risk to reward and actually a good chance, also a good chance of... Um, of being successful in short term. It also leads me to think of a trade that would progress 
as the price moves up and not really put all your eggs in one basket from around here choose a direction and stick to it i'd rather and uh, not choose a direction and then when i choose one uh, entering very slowly just think of this as a consolidation area i mean look at it on the 15 minute chart uh the only trade that seemed to have a nice interesting uh perspective today was a bounce off the central pivot with taking profit at the resistance point. That was it. So I think the exposure for this trade should be pro proportional to uh, how clear the 15 minutes chart uh, looks. And that for me is just uh, very, very unclear. Oh, look at the MACD on the 15 minutes chart. I don't think uh, it's even possible to know where this uh, MACD is uh, biased. I think it's slightly towards the short side, but it's very hard to, to see. One thing is clear though, um, it will break. It will break uh, one way or the other. My bet is that it's just simply an assumption and just a bias um, looking at the larger chart that it will be towards the upside. Okay, just take it as an opinion, nothing else. I have, really have nothing to back me up short term. Simply um, an assumption based on uh, the fact that short term within the, let me just show it differently. Within the area of this wave, we still haven't completed the move, that, the corrective move. And it looks to me like the, the actual wave up is starting here with the break, the breach of the previous high. This happened today. Okay? We have support from the pivot. So I would look for a bit of an extension. Don't forget this pink line is actually a support on the daily, uh, on the weekly chart. So based on all this, I would have a bias 50.1% uh, up. Uh, but that's it. That's, I think, uh, everything that we, we have. Uh, what I think is more interesting right now is to think about um, possible scenarios for for uh, swing trading. And uh, here I think we have a much better view. Uh, 160 to 160.90, somewhere around here. Yeah, 160.80. So this area, I think, would be the first... Uh, the first area of uh, resistance I would look for as a target for the retracement and the beginning of the larger move down. I mean, we've seen the euro uh, dropping. Uh, euro is sort of consolidating now, but it doesn't look uh, like much to me. I'm also uh, not so very not clear on that in short term, but it starts to look more and more bearish midterm. Okay, so this is why. I think the only setup I can uh, point out for GU, um, a technical setup more than just a hunch, is a short towards 160, 160, uh, 60. Okay, not beyond 160, 120 in any case. Because if it breaks 160, 120, it would go in an area where the retracement should not go, and that might complicate things and might even uh, put under question this um, overall setup. But while it's still around 160, uh, 160, uh, yeah, 70 maximum, this area right here, this will be the short for a larger target of 154, maybe even uh, if it manages to, to break three, uh, through uh, 153, can uh, reach much, much lower. And this will be the long-term direction that uh, we're looking for in in the pound dollar, but when and how this happens remains to be seen. Okay, uh, quickly looking at the rainbow, we see a clearly bearish rainbow on the one hour, four hour, but daily is actually suggesting the same thing as the other chart. The fact that price breached the bottom of the rainbow, just like here, as you can see, it looks just like that, because there's some support here, just like um, what happened over the last few days, but the market is pulling uh, back up. And the top of the rainbow right now is 160.50, which corresponds pretty well um, with what I was saying uh, earlier, 
technically we have this area around 160, 50, 160, 70 um, to give us the bounce back down. Now, when the rainbow is aligning itself again towards the short side, that will be uh, the moment when I think it's going to be pretty clear uh, we might be going down on a stronger uh, move. Until then, well, back into consolidation, we should uh, probably go uh, somewhere around 159, 160. Um, I'm expecting this to happen within the next week, and uh, I don't think it's um, far-fetched to say that maybe next Monday we'll catch us somewhere in between 158.50 and 160.50. Okay, it depends on how aggressive the retracement goes or how much it goes down. But as you can see, uh, guys, every time the market breaks the bottom of the rainbow on the daily, it just takes a bit of time to reconfirm that direction, and this is where the bounce usually happens. Now, this was a bigger bounce. It was actually a comeback into the uh, bullish move. This was a move. Mm, well, again, look at this. It just attempted to break the top of the rainbow, but it it was not successful. It, it did not manage to bring not even the yellow uh, moving averages above the top. Okay, look at this. Exactly the same situation. Okay, just rejection. Now, if it happens like it happened right here, okay, this would be just a pullback, but price wanted to go down, wanted to align towards the short, and it actually happened, but not before a pullback of approximately 150 bits. Uh, examples are all over the rainbow chart, really. How it um, react to the bottom of the rainbow either precisely or somewhere within 50 pips from the bottom which is not so much if you consider that we're looking at the daily chart all right so conclusions for GU um, I would say for short term um, I have nothing really except uh, a setup long starting from 5840 towards 159 and set up short at 58.70 for an attempt at 57, uh, sorry, 57.70, um, target around 57.20. Really very short term, um, I would recommend tight stops and um, just following the trade, uh, not really allowing it uh, too much room because things can be very, very dicey here. Even a spike down to 157.80 followed by a move up to 58.30 would completely change the situation and definitely it would call for a stop and reverse. Um, I wouldn't recommend staying into the trade uh, at this point if you're trading, of course, short term. If you're trading mid term, this is simply not an area to enter to begin with. Uh, I would wait for a short around the 160 area. And if you are long, um, for bigger moves, well, just wait for it to find support and then allow the market to pull back to take your profits or cover your losses depending on where you are, uh, you enter the long trade. I'm looking um, on my other screen, I have the live data, uh, data system and I see that it's really very, very close. Um, the directions are very close to each other and I just have a signal now, for instance, on uh, Aussie dollar short, but I am also noticing, looking at the key levels, that even a move of about 25 pips would cancel this signal. So I just prefer to simply stay aside at this time and just allow the market to give me a response. All right, any questions regarding uh, pound dollar? I want to move uh, towards uh, GJ. <coughs> All right, if there's anything, let me know, please. Now, what do we have on GJ? Remember, guys, we had this view from last week. I was looking for more continuation to the downside with targets in the 126 area. Now, we even crossed that, okay? We crossed it uh, down into the 124.60, very close to 125, by the way, psychological level. And... Frankly, it remains equally valid, this perspective. We just um, retraced to a 50% uh, 
of the move up and I will not be convinced that um, the yen is going to appreciate long term until I see um, at least 500 pips from here. Until then, I will consider these levels to be, for swing trading, actually good entry opportunities um, into the bigger move. Again, uh, the view on uh, GU and um, pound yen is pretty different, but I will not hesitate to just uh, describe what I see on the chart. I see the GU bias um, bearish uh, midterm, long term, but definitely GJ with a bullish bias because in general I um, have a bearish view of the yen uh, for this year. So I'm expecting it to end the year really low. Now what we have so far, let's see. It did this move on the rainbow on the four hour Okay, now we're pulling back again. There's some support, some support at 125. I think that this is a pretty good uh, bouncing point too. Uh, I would look for at least a 126.50 or a 127, even if price is dropping uh, further on. But I have really no, um, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't see more upside than just that. Now, look at this. This will be the weekly level of resistance. Here you go, right here. 127.50. And this level, 126.50, which is the previous low. Price is now at 125.30. So, this would be an important level that once broken, I would expect to be retested. Okay? So, I do not dare to just place this. Um, wave right at the bottom, not yet, but I think we might be very close to seeing it um, come to an end within the next few days. All right, let's see how it looks. Um, let me go back on the other chart. Now it looks um, on the weekly, it just has this um, strongly uh, bearish, uh, view let's say this would be the argument that I have for long in um, long term we have finally a clear trend line break and yes we have retracement but there's nothing more than a retracement at this point and we have this level Okay, this level was a previous support, important level of support on the weekly, which became resistance, and failed to become a support last week. Well, I would expect at least a retest of this 126.50 before price goes either lower or higher. But as far as I can see, you see this wave here, clearly breaking um, the, the high of the previous one, and just indicating a continuation, you see, one, sorry, A, all right, A, B, and the C somewhere, the word 141, 145. It hasn't confirmed yet. This wave hasn't confirmed. But the best entries are somewhere towards the 50% the level where we are right now to 61.8% and also when <clears throat> when price goes to retest okay this trend line was uh, clearly broken earlier so this is basically the 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 reason why I'm still uh, and I will be uh, most likely for at least another few months uh, regardless of what's happening um bullish on the yen pairs All right, the trend line that will confirm when, whenever that happens. And the very nice ABC shape of this corrective wave. Okay? Let's go short term. Now, short term, it, it looks like, you see, this would be the first um, rate of change uh, crossover. It's usually very... Um, 
difficult to to trust this because it's within a very strong uh, bearish trend and only now the trades and the rate of change are crossing up i would trust the uh, sorry the the macd and the trades are crossing up i trust the macd more because the tricks has come after a long, long trip. It took it uh, some time to, to cross over here. But the rate of change looks exhausted. So I would look for another attempt, another bullish uh, crossover to give me a, a confirmation for long. Now let's see what we have short term. There you go. We had a break of the previous resistance, as you can see. Not a very clear one, but yes, there was a break. There you go. And I'm actually expecting this to to go up uh, to uh, yeah at least a 126.50. Look at the support point, as uh, is usually the case with. Um, yen pairs they do not bottom until they make a nice double top or triple top or double or triple bottom formation that's exactly what's happening here we have double bottom we have pretty good uh, divergences here at the bottom and we have a high and a higher high a low and a higher low this is giving us a short term direction is still the one that I want to to follow. Target first target in the 126 area, then 126.50, and if broken, it might even reverse back into the daily uh, bullish um, trend. Now let's see if we can identify any sort of uh, short-term setup. <clears throat> Not much at this point, apparently. There are some uh, short-term trend lines here, but it just doesn't work because the volatility in the market is very, very low, as you can see. See, if I just move this uh, trend line slightly lower on the actual uh, spike, we find that it was not even broken. So um, a very, very... Uh, confusing situation for short term I think for not only for these two pairs um, the other pairs are not looking any better uh, it just seems like the market is trapped between two setups two scenarios at this time so either one uh, could come into play and actually in short term it's only priced later in the day during the US session that will give us something apart from that um, I would only look for uh, key levels on the four hour and uh, daily chart for swing trading and that's it now let's have a look at uh, gj from a rainbow perspective again one moment all right the rainbow i think will be pretty uh, choppy on the smaller chart yeah as you can see, the 15 minute chart is now biased long. This was actually a good signal. It was the second alignment, but well, it's in the past, so we don't care. And right now, price is inside the consolidation, inside this uh, rainbow. I'm looking at the live data system. It says 24%, it's really flat. I think it's due to the short term um, chart, the 15 minutes, five minutes. It just seems like. Um, doesn't go anywhere. You see this uh, chart, for instance, looks now starting. It's starting to look bearish. 15 minutes is still bullish, with the limit at uh, 125.25. 30 minutes is bearish. So, pretty confusing uh, situation all, all, overall. <clears throat> I think once it drops below 125, though, um, the weight of the trend should pull it uh, below 124.50 so that I think would be a short term uh, possible entry but not I would say not higher than 124 
let me just see, 20, 124, 70. No, actually even 125 should be okay. It's definitely out of the rainbow. Yeah, 125, 124.90 uh, should be the trigger for short-term uh, moves in uh, GJ. M more to the downside. I would recommend uh, taking profit somewhere around 124.50, 124, and not allow it too much time, not uh, wait for it to go too too much. Don't expect much of the market today, actually. And uh, if you are into a trade and it seems like you're on the wrong side. Uh, well, my suggestion is not to wait and not to give it, not to be too confident, since uh, in general the market is not giving us that sort of of confidence. It just seems very, very. Um, the the ranges are quite tight and the direction can change in a matter of hours. Can go from a fully confirmed. Um, a short uh, entry to more retracement and a, a, a bullish confirmation in on the 5 and 15 minutes chart. Whatever it is, I think the, the name of the game is uh, be very, very careful for every trade and ideally if you can afford to just uh, sit um, aside today, I would recommend it definitely. Um, I don't think you would lose too much and uh, well, if the market does move, you have a strong move today, you will always have tomorrow to to trade according to that direction. It's probably just opening up, so it shouldn't be much of a loss. Okay? I don't think uh, rushing in today uh, will make uh, things any better. All right. Any questions, guys? All right. There's nothing I, am, I will stop here for today. Not too much, I'm afraid. Not uh, too many uh, setups for uh, for today. I only uh, I can only look for um, midterm uh, positions, and I think those should be more stable. Actually, entering and managing positions like that um, with levels that you can trust, levels that you can actually um, see confirmed, uh, and have a stable confirmation, not what we have right now on the small chart. All right. Well, uh, if uh, there are no questions, I will be uh, stopping it um, here. Thanks for attending today, guys. I wish you a great uh, week. And if there is any question, let me uh, just um, type in my email address. All right. For any questions, just drop me an email. And... Um, yeah, thanks again for today, guys, and um, have a great week. I'll see you next uh, Monday.